here, Walking with Kandinsky, Afternoons with Greek, and Song Within are all designed on a double spine triptych. And so what happens is that the, as you open it, there is actually two bindings, and you unfold the book till you get to the end. So every time you turn a page, you hold on to an, an element from the last page and expand on hopefully the meaning and the feeling that was on that page. And then you have to refold it. We actually have instructions at the end because it made people so nervous. Uh, but if you did it wrong, you actually would just have a different right because you'd actually have a different set of sequences as you went back through the book. So the, the point is to have the viewer not be passive but really be engaged in the Photo books are, are incredible for a number of reasons. I've done a lot of curating and organization of exhibitions. And you put a lot of work into thinking about sequence and, and what goes next and how things should look. And then the show is up and the show is down and maybe people got there and maybe they didn't. And what I found with the photo book is I take that same thoughtfulness, that same energy, but I make something that lasts, something that I can hand to someone over time. I think, too, with the accessibility now of photo books, it lets us say things that we we couldn't say before. We can put together images to tell stories and to be able to really reach out beyond ourselves with what we want to say about art, about the world, and about the talk. There's a lot of untold stories in the photographs of these books. And one of the things that we wanted to do is we wanted to allow the black photographers opportunities to show their work, the quality of their work, their histories, and their realities. Mm -hmm. There was a group of guys that got together uh, basically in Brooklyn, New York, and a fellow by the name of Joe Crawford. And, uh, he, it was his idea. He got together with a few guys from Kamunki Workshop, which was a black minority photographic organization in New York. And then we started nourishing the idea of assembling the book and trying to make it work. And finances and gymnastics in between trying to hold down steady jobs. It was, very, it was a very difficult program. But the effort was well worth it. And if we didn't go through that effort, I wouldn't be able to share these stories with you. I originally went to Haiti for an assignment and very quickly realized I would be coming back, that there was more I wanted to do there. I felt like a lot of the imagery that I was seeing coming out of Haiti was not fairly representative of what I was seeing. And uh, it was also about that time where we stopped hearing about Haiti. So I hooked up with a small organization called Giant Global that's based here in Atlanta and began a series of trips back to various different parts throughout the country, documenting mainly the public health issues that Haitians are facing post-earthquake, as well as I focus a lot of time um, on really one issue, uh, the business of children in Haiti after the earthquake. And a lot of these orphanages have popped up and people are selling children and there's a lot of things going on there that I felt like really I really wanted to kind of get deeper into. and. So we put this book together, and 100% of the proceeds are going to go back to Giant Global. It's kind of my stamp of approval for an organization, so I think a lot of people do want to help, want to get involved, but they don't know how, and they don't necessarily trust where their money is going to go. And I saw a lot of that certainly in Haiti, of funds not being managed correctly. So this was a way that um, I felt like people could get involved and give back. I brought about 40 books that sort of showcase just the, the amazing diversity in self-publishing today. Um, for a pop-up exhibition to just show people um, just what can be done and, and how amazing the books are. Um, I think the, the initial idea really came from, you know, I, I have a degree in photography. I, I am a collector of photography books. And, um, I think when the Blur Photography Book Now competition really started, personally I was frustrated with not knowing where to go to actually see the winning books or physically look at them and see what they were like, see the work, see the quality. Um, and so that idea was sort of the start of it, you know, how, what's, for me at least, something seemed to be lacking. Um, and what I realized was I was more interested in creating an archive and sort of really creating a collection that looks at what's happening now in self-publishing and independent contemporary publishing and 
Uh, you know, sort of preserving it also for the future. Mm -hmm.